Dude, dude, that part is so weird. When I found that out, that blew my mind. Can you imagine? That shit would be so weird, bro. That would be so weird. Think about it. You'd be like, oh! I'm saying it. How often ancient Rome experts? Oh my God. Okay, I have to watch this. I'm Lauren Ginsburg, professor of ancient Rome, and I'm here to answer your questions from the internet. Oh, this dude, is this is ancient sick. Rome support. I gotta do this. Abbe Eagle. Why did Romans wear togas? The average Roman did not go out of their house hanging out in a toga because togas were extremely long, extremely complicated gowns to put together. So even extremely elite Roman citizens recognize the toga as a ceremonial gown. I like this image because we have all these people who are wearing things that are decidedly not togas. What they are wearing is the basic Roman garment that anyone of any status, male or female, would wear, which is what's called the tunic or the tunica. And this is essentially a long t-shirt at C450HS. Did the Romans really wash their clothes in urine? Yes, and essentially so do we. So if what? you look at any of your household cleaners, you will see that one of the highest ingredients generally is ammonia. It's very caustic, so it's not always very good for your things, but it cleans extremely effectively. And so the Romans were able to recognize that urine, when stored for quite some time, tends to break down into ammonia. So when you would bring your clothes to um, a felonica, Roman shit is kind of fash coded, not gonna lie. I mean, fascists literally do love Rome. Yes. What do you think the fasci comes from? Where do you think the fasci symbolism comes from? <laughs> but like, but I mean, the Roman Empire is sick, dude. Straight up. It's the same as any other empire, especially when like a long ass time uh, period has passed by. We're obviously still living in the, in the ashes of the British Empire, so obviously it's not the same where, like, people hate it, understandably so, because victims of that uh, colonial violence, like, still very much, like, the, the, the state lines have been drawn off of that still. I mean, literally, look at the fucking, uh, look at Israel, right? However, as far as the Roman Empire goes, like, you kind of look back at it in awe. For me... I've never been a big Roman Empire guy. Obviously, I learned more about the Ottoman Empire. I didn't really care about the Roman Empire at all when I was growing up. However, however, the reason why I'm fascinated by it is because overall, overall, I've talked about this before, like they had incredible technological achievements for like how, like they were really ahead of the game. And then they had a fucking server wipe. And I personally find, like, I personally find that fascinating. That, like, they were so goddamn advanced at such a fucking early-ass stage that, like, basically the, the foundational principles and, like, even quite literally the cities. Like, you go to fucking London, right? You go to London. You go to half of Europe. You go to half of Western Europe. You go to London. Like, that's literally shit that the fucking Romans built that these Anglo-Saxon dogs barely fucking managed to understand and lived on top of while dying because they couldn't wipe their asses correctly because of the server wipe that I was referencing, which is nuts. That's crazy. No server wipe, it just moved to the Islamic world. No, server wipe came for Europe. The European servers were wiped. Uh, obviously, the, the Muslim servers were uh, working fine uh, at the time. What is the server wipe? Their fall was extremely slow. No, that's not what I'm... I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not saying that the meme of, like, uh, the Roman Empire fell in one day. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about at all. Obviously, <laughs> people love talking about, like, the Roman Empire fell because of this or that. And it's like, dog, that was, like, over a thousand years. The fuck are you talking about? Like, America's... You can track the American Empire's beginning and, like, unironic end. <laughs> unironic and in, in a much shorter time frame than like the fucking Roman Empire. And that is even if you don't add the Byzantine uh, to the, the conversation, which some European scholars don't like doing because then technically you would have to say that the Roman Empire ended because the Ottoman Empire destroyed it. And that would mean that like these scary Muslim guys are the ones who ended the greatest empire of all time. It's a little bit of fucking in my opinion, uh, 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 just, you know, somewhat a little bit white supremacist attitude that like a lot of people have normalized and have 
Anyway, let's continue. So this is a, a laundromat essentially in the ancient world. First thing was it would go into a vat in which highly concentrated urine would be poured and you would let it sit there. Then the clothes would be washed with clean flowing water in three to four separate vats until the end it was basically perfectly clean and it could be line dried. Finn Huckster, did the Romans really have vomitoriums? Yes but not in the way that you mean. It is true that if you look at some urban plans in Rome, stadium buildings, amphitheaters, theaters, places where tens of thousands of people would come, you will often find the word vomitorium that's written there. And somehow a myth has- Save the children? You're a save the children type of guy? Thoughts on saving the children update? has been created that this is where decadent Romans would go after they ate too much food and they would purge themselves. This is not what those words mean. It comes from the Latin word vomo, vomere, which basically means to send forth. And so, yes, on the one hand, send forth your food. But on the other, it can mean to send forth people. So what these were were actually large, large stairways to get lots of people out of a any ancient society has technological advantages, so happens to also be a colonial empire. Maybe it's not advancement, but exploitation that's behind it. No, exploitation plays a, a role throughout uh, the entire course of history. The stadium very quickly. So we actually still use the exact same technology that Romans called vomitoria. We just don't call them vomitoriums. And I, for one, think maybe we should. At not land loo. Man, they didn't even have popcorn back in ancient Rome. True story. What did they snack on in the Colosseum? This made headlines last summer because they've actually started to do excavations in the drainage system of the Colosseum and in the sewers. Because if you think about it, if you go to a rock concert today, you can see everything sticky on the floor, people throw their food all over the place. Where does that go? In ancient Rome, it would go down into the drains and it would go down into the sewers. And that means that things that can survive for those millennia, we can be able to tell that those were the kind of foods that were snacked on. All sorts of varieties of nuts and residues of nuts have been found in these sewers. Fruits, for example, figs and peaches and other fruits, grapes that were easy to carry. Also, what they discovered was that people seem to bring or at least have access to small portable grills, sort of what? like tailgating grills, little braziers where they could grill meat at the time as you watched people fight to the death and animals. Dude, that's fucking so sick. Come on, dude. These motherfuckers were grilling, dog. That shit is, oh, that's so cool. Die. At Jua Dog, why does concrete from ancient Rome stand up better than modern concrete? If we look at this dome in the pantheon of Rome, it looks pretty. Oh, this part, this part is actually sick. I wonder if she'll talk about like the new, the newly uh, discovered technologies. This is what I bring up all the time is like volcanic ash and the chemical composition of the, the type of like cement that they use is, is literally, oh God, it's so sick spectacular today. If we consider that this dome is made of concrete and we think of a bridge that might have been built in your city in the 1970s, these two things do not look the same. So just this past summer, a team of civil engineers yeah. from MIT set out to figure out what this was and they think that they have an answer. If you look at Roman concrete, you can see in the matrix these chunks of white material. So this group of MIT scientists figured out that these white chunks called lime class were deliberate and were also proof that the Romans used something called quicklime as opposed to lime that had been pre-mixed with water, which had always been the assumption. And the quicklime superheats the chemical process as it makes concrete. And so one of the- Roman concrete is not actually better than modern concrete. It's just not as subjected to much load as modern structures are. No, the, the part that is actually better than modern concrete is that it's a self-fixing it's a self-fixing type of concrete, right? I thought like it is not susceptible to water damage in the same way that modern concrete is because it actually ends up self-healing over time due to water. Water ends up forcing it to expand. So it expands into the fucking cracks rather than uh, what would happen in under normal circumstances where like water ends up destroying uh, modern concrete over a long ass period of time, which is fucking nuts. It's, it's insane that, like, it's built to last. It's crazy. The things we've always known about Roman concrete is that it can harden really quickly, including underwater. Also, the other property that they were able to recreate in the lab was that Roman concrete can be self-healing to a certain amount. So if you put modern concrete and Roman concrete in a stress environment so that the concrete cracks, Roman concrete can actually heal that cracks. 
And the key that they think they found is that these lime clasts, these calcificized uh, white chunks, would be able to immediately distribute material to those cracks and help with the self-healing properties. It is much more expensive to make concrete this way, so I'm not actually sure that we're about to have a Roman concrete revolution. But it is pretty cool that these scientists think they've recreated what the secret of Roman concrete is. I mean, that's At sick Dylan's as fuck. Fault. Did those gladiators really fight lions? How often did they die? Absolutely. Gladiators really fought lions. It's not even like they would just be released from a that shit's sick as fuck too, by the way. Gate and everyone could tell. And architectural investigation has shown the technology through which lions below the surface of the floor of the Colosseum would able to be launched into the air to suddenly appear. But the question about how often did they die? We have tombstones that show gladiators who have won um, 50 different competitions in their life. Evidence of gladiators who retire from being a gladiator and train other gladiators. And so it wouldn't really make sense if every time they went into the arena, there was a 50-50 shot that they weren't going to walk out. Instead, what we see mostly when it's human versus human, gladiator versus gladiator, is a heavily stage-managed, choreographed fight that's designed to be extremely exciting for the audience. That doesn't mean that they weren't sometimes killed. We do also have evidence that gladiators could be killed, but that would have been agreed upon in advance by whoever was running the games and whoever had nominal control over the gladiator's life. We have get gators. What did the Romans invent that we still use today? One thing we wanna poke at is this word invention because the Romans sort of took things that existed, concrete is a good example, and perf- Victoria Civilius with the best Rome video with six million views, the longest, uh, the longest year in human history, 46 BCE. Affected it. But the example I think of immediately is actually surgical tools, scalpels, tweezers, forceps. But the actual basic tools, if you looked on, say, the set of Grey's Anatomy or some medical show, would look extremely similar to what the Romans were using in the past. And they would be made out of similar types of metal. From This Is Nico, did they have bars in ancient Rome or did wine just flow freely down the streets? Unfortunately, no. But they did have bars and they had bars all over the place. So these were often called tavernae. And these would be bars where you could get drink, but you could also get use. food. And this is a great example. We so this comes use. from some recent excavations in Pompeii in an oh, area that's a shitter, right? the public. A and shitter? what you can see here is a big counter. Or so maybe you can not. imagine someone behind here actually serving alcohol. But those big jars that you see- Oh, I thought that's like where you shit in it. also have food. So stews, rich, hot items that people would either get to have as their primary meal of the day in the bar, or that they would then take home where they could heat it up simply. So these bars show up so often in these working class neighborhoods of Pompeii. And the analogy I like to use is they show up as often as a Dunkin' Donuts does in the city of Boston. And the graffiti that we found on them shows that they're really a-, a so Yeah, that's the other crazy part. They did so much graffiti, bro. They were tagging shit social hub of the neighborhood. It's likely that you would just go to the pub on the corner, much the way we think of neighborhood bars today. From Attempts Flame. Come on, I suppose next you're gonna tell me that all those Greek and Roman statues were actually gaudily painted. Yes, I'm here to tell you that all of those Greek and Roman statues were painted, but I object to the term god. Dude, dude, that part is so weird. When I found that out, that blew my fucking mind. Can you imagine? That shit would be so weird, bro. That would be so fucking weird. Think about it. You'd be like, oh, it's like, it's like you look at that and it's just like a human. I, I feel like that. I feel like it's better if it's all white. You know what I mean? Because like having all that should be colored. You, you'd be like, I mean, it's like scary. You know what I mean? It's just like, is that a human or is that not a human? It, it fuck you up. Think about it this way. Think about it this way. Think about it this, uh, this way. No, no. The, uh, it's just, it just looks like a human. The, why the rest of the world is very colorful? No, because like, it, imagine, imagine you're just like walking down the street and you see a fucking, you know, people in Roman were stupid, right? What do you mean? I'm just saying, like, if you saw like a, a like a statue, okay, and it looked like a human being, even when you you know walked up next to it, you'd be like, what the fuck? Oh god, it, it freaked me the fuck out. You think movies are real too? No, dude. There's a difference between. Really? You think like a statue out in fucking public is the same as a movie? How fucking stupid. You're watching something on screen. Obviously, it's different than like, I'm saying the shock factor of having like, like going into a fucking wax museum. Imagine if all of the statues looked like that. It would be freaky.
bodily. When people think about what it was like to walk around the streets of ancient Rome, they think about these things that are here. Bright white marble, marble buildings, marble statues. The Romans would have found all of this white marble extremely boring. They loved vibrancy, and they were also world-class painters. There was a fantastic exhibit last summer at the Metropolitan Museum of Art that actually featured a number of recreated statues in which scientists had very carefully taken tiny bits of pigment on statues. So you could see that, say, a statue of someone like Nero here, each layer of clothing would be painted with shades, with texture, with patterns. And the same thing is true with Roman buildings. Rome was a wash of color. But Nevada de Night 67. Was ancient Rome really a sexual free-for-all? So here's the thing. Romans had a very healthy sex life. Romans had sex inside and outside the institution of marriage. Romans had sex for procreation, yes, but also for pleasure. Romans had access to contraception. Romans, especially Roman women, would rise up when they thought that those uh, rights were being curtailed. Romans have pictures and works of art and uh, literary texts that talk about sexual desire, that talk about sex acts, that talk about their favorite positions. Short, it's woman on top is the thing that they say. It's pretty funny thinking about that yeah, thinking about that and then, like, the next 500, 600 years of European history. Like, that's what I mean. This is exactly what I'm talking about with the server wipe, okay? Like, this is part of it where, like, they did all this shit and then server wipe and then they were literally so backwards. Now, because the Roman Empire is so long, over such a long period of time, and I will admit it's not my... I'm, this is a recent fascination of mine, so it's not like I'm super well-versed in it. Um, obviously, it depends on what era that you're talking about. You know what I mean? But even then, thank God we've all agreed already on women's contraception being their right and choice. Yeah. The reason why I look at that and think like, the reason why I look at that and think like, damn, you know, you can just like really fucking regress is because I feel like, we're at the tail end of, if you're thinking about the Roman Empire as like a one continuous uh, empire all the way from whenever it started, the, the monarchy to fucking republic to empire to the Byzantine Empire, that's so many fucking decades. I mean, that's so many centuries, right? And I guess you could say the same about like the British Empire if you factor in like the American Empire as a continuation of the British Empire. And it and even within that time frame, it does feel like we're, you know, coming to the tail end of a server wipe potentially. A little bit grim to think about, but they seem to like a lot. Men have sex with women, men have sex with men, women have sex with women, women have I thought the Roman Empire went from monarchy to republic to back to the uh monarch or, or uh like emperor emperor structure. I thought it was like kings and then it was a republic and then it was uh empire the female position of the roman empire was of servitude don't forget they were not having fun it's just the men were i don't know cucked i guess and accepted their loss of power if women rose up i mean that's a i i, I don't i don't know if that's i think if you look at the roman empire you have to look at women's position in society then in comparison to after the roman empire and not necessarily to today Kings, consults, republics, emperor. But life under empires isn't as cool as a socialist free-for-all we're about to have when this one collapses, right? I don't think it's great when, when stability and structure erodes entirely. It becomes not a socialist free-for-all, but instead a capitalist free-for-all. It becomes a anarcho-capitalist dystopia have sex with men and so much like today it was really a spectrum of sexual behavior sexual performance sexual interest from the kino corner which roman emperor was objectively the best the roman empire was an autocracy which means that all roman emperors were autocrats and it means i don't actually think any of them were very good people i think in general that form of government doesn't lead to people doing good things. So I'm gonna take a couple of examples of good and bad emperors. We have a friend Nero here, who everyone probably agrees, the worst of the worst emperors. And then we have everyone's favorite emperor on the internet, Marcus Aurelius. He wrote this nice book of stoic philosophy, and so people think he's extremely chill. And Except, I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know how correct this is, but he was, didn't he spell doom for, uh, 
for the end of the Roman Empire, triggering the end of the Roman Empire by forcing his fail son into power rather than doing the regular, like, I guess, kind of meritocratic approach, which was to son a general or, like, to son someone that you considered to be, like, someone who you thought had, like, really good bona fides. I realized it was a loser. Good thing Commodus took power and started doing real shit. I like, I like the reactionary approach to, like, ancient Rome. Yeah, dude, Commodus is the fucking real one, dog. What are you talking about? He, he had fun. And thus, under his empire, things must have gone particularly well. Pee. But let's ask this question objectively the best for whom? And was he objectively the best for the uh, substantial population of the Roman Empire at that time who were enslaved? We always have an idea of what we mean as best for whom, and I just don't happen to think that the Roman Empire produced anyone that we would consider to be a fair ruler today. At Royally Ari, how often do you think about the Roman Empire? Well, this is a little bit of an unfair question because I have to say the answer is more than daily because it is a professional obligation. I probably think about the Roman Empire more than your average person. Anazora HQ. How effective were public toilets and bathrooms at keeping people clean? And how was hygiene in ancient Rome? Romans had extremely advanced technologies of water. For example, they had extensive systems of aqueducts that were able to bring clean water across vast expanses of land. They had a sewer system as of, I believe, the 4th century BC. That's bananas. They had public bathing facilities, so it was very regular if you were a Roman, no matter your status, to actually go and use these baths on a daily basis to clean yourselves. And yes, they also had public toilets. This would not be the only place that people would go to the bathroom, but you can see in this that we would have stalls. They would probably not lead to a lot of privacy. And you can see that running along down the side of them would be places for channels of water. So what were the Romans not good at in terms of hygiene with this water technology? Well, they didn't understand things like dysentery, about communicable diseases that way. And so if you're having, um, say, reusable toilet paper, which in the Roman world would be a sea sponge, and it's being cleaned in vinegar, which can do some things, that's not going to stop things like dysentery from being passed along. Anezora HQ. What kind of toys did Roman children play with? We have so much wonderful information about the value that was put on playing as a social emotional strategy for raising Roman children. One of my favorite is actually this doll. This particular one is made out of ivory. And what's so impressive about it is you can see that the limbs are articulated. So you can see that you can sit. I didn't miss, I, I did not miss the public shitting. I, I'm good on not seeing. This doll down, you can have her stand up and this doll actually also has the famous hairstyle of the Roman Empress at the time, Julia Dom It literally has points of articulation, which is a uh, fucking OP. Domna. So she's also a high fashion doll. We know that dice games were very common, walking toys that would clearly teach little toddlers how to walk, and a lot of the building blocks that teach children how to play with each other were considered particularly important. And with this doll could also be considered extremely beloved objects that someone would keep well past their girlhood from El Gringo Loco. What was the average lifespan of a Roman peasant? This is a really great question because you're gonna find on the internet when you look this up, this idea that the Roman average lifespan was 35 years. And then people often think as a result that if you made it to 35, you were grandparent age. And that's just not true because we have to think about what an average means. Yeah, uh, people, this is a common misconception with uh, average lifespan. It, it just means that like, there's a lot of childhood death, right? Like it doesn't mean that there are, it doesn't mean that there aren't like hella fucking 75 year olds. Yeah. Child, a child that's like child mortality fucking ruins those numbers usually, which obviously means like a society is not necessarily, a, a society is not necessarily advanced. Clearly, if there's a lot of child mortality, like the United States of America, but you know. Infant mortality in Rome was astronomically high. Most children died within the first year of birth. So that was just infant mortality. Child mortality, about 50% of children 
died by age 10. And you can see already why that's lowering and lowering that average. So if you made it to age 10 as a lower class Roman citizen, whether you were living in the country, you had a decently high chance of making it into your mid 50s. And we know plenty of people lived beyond that. Our next question is from Krista Collin. How does an archeologist look at an ancient column and conclude this was a Roman brothel? They could not do that. We do know that there's a very famous purpose built brothel in Pompeii. And the building is entirely full of tiny stalls. And in each of the stalls is only a bed shaped platform. Above the stalls are extremely graphic sex acts. And then there is graffiti. And my favorite that has survived- Guys, is artistic nudity. Somebody just woke up. Ew, look at that. Nastiness still from the fucking dog part. She's still got fucking gunk on her mouth. Ugh. Hello. Look at that tail. Look at that fucking cute ass tail. Survived is over one stall, and I have to imagine this was from the sex worker that wrote thrust slowly. Putting all of those things together, it's pretty easy to see that this was a place where sex work was on the agenda. Nimahona Tuitu, what rights did Roman women gain in Imperial Rome? Roman women couldn't vote, and that's a big one, but Roman women could be citizens. Roman women could own property in their own name. They could inherit property in their own name. Roman women could be business owners, and some of whom were using their own business sense to advance their children, especially their sons and their political ambition. Roman women could hire a lawyer to defend themselves or to bring a suit in court. Roman women lived with a greater degree of freedom across social classes than we're used to seeing in the ancient world. At in cream cakes. How many civil wars did Rome have, including the Byzantine era? Not bad for the time. No, pretty good for the time. Um, time to watch the unbiased history. That of is Rome. a very hard question to answer um, for very good reasons. One is that the Romans thought that civil war was something inside them that you had to fight against every day or it would erupt. Romans had documented civil wars, and they're the ones that actually came up with this term, where two the rest of Europe was in prehistoric communism, so was it really better in Rome? I don't know, dog. I do like technological advancements. Like, primitive accumulation is great and all, but, like, I'm not a fucking anarcho-primitivist. You know what I mean? And it's not even, like, I, I, don't even, I wouldn't even consider it at that point. It's like... Two Roman armies would fight each other, headed by two Romans. But what's the difference between that and an uprising of enslaved people who are part of the Roman population, like Spartacus? Is that a civil war? What's the difference between the What is on the disgusting British were fought people were farming. It was way sicker. Whole system of Roman provinces rising up against Roman rule. They're part of Rome and they're rising up and they're fighting, but they're fighting more with guerrilla war tactics. Do we call that a civil war? You can see it becomes very hard to parse when one part of Rome is fighting the other, but it happens all the time. At Blood Orange, what the fuck did ancient Romans wear during the winter? I know, right? Because all the images we see are in these sort of lightweight linen shirts and like sandals. That's our image of Rome. And it snowed in Rome. Well, the key to Roman happiness in this would be layers in the same way that it is today. And Romans actually had access even then to material that we know is the best to keep you warm. And that is wool. They didn't have access to the top of the hour ad break avoidance fees, though. So at the top of the hour, you know, you had a, you had a guy shout both the... the New commands of, of Caesar, but also uh, serve you what is known as ads, right? For three minutes while doing weird hand gestures, okay? And the reality is, luckily, you have a uh, $5 a month or a free Twitch Prime in order to avoid the top of the hour ad break. The guy from Rome 2005, yeah. Yeah. Five denarii per month. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your five, five denarii to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Caesar commands it. No tradesmen of ill repute. <laughs> no prostitutes and no tradesmen of ill repute. <laughs> I love that. I fucking love that. <laughs> Uh, here's a three minute ad break now. So the average Roman would wear socks. Yes, Romans really pioneered the idea of socks and sandals. They would wear extra thick socks, but they also didn't just wear sandals. They had thick leather shoes and the more layers of leather, the better those shoes would be in winter conditions. And then cloaks. 
tons and tons of beautiful wool cloaks on top. At Robert Smith 29th. I was wondering how the Romans produced their Roman coins. Robert Smith's PFP and how they put the emperor onto the coins. The way the Romans made coins was a by hand process. So what you would do That's is crazy. you would have a base and you would put in this base a mold that had one side of the coin. And in that mold, you would put a metal disc and I would put it face down. So you can imagine it's almost like a clam with two molds and the metal disc goes in here. And then I take a hammer and I whack it. And that's called stamping. And that would put the images on both sides of the coin. From at Theiston Thought. Did ancient Romans go on hikes or go to the beach for relaxation? Yes. There was a heavy leisure time activity in Rome where people would go to the coast, especially the Bay of Naples and have seaside villas and go to these really fancy baths, sort of like a spa vacation, but it could last months, the extreme elite of Rome that would have access to these seaside villas. So the average Roman person probably didn't have a lot of time to be able to do that. So what did they do to relax? Rome had a lot of holidays around a festival calendar and these festivals would feature gladiatorial matches. That's just so sick. Dude, fun time is so important. Matches, they would feature chariot racing. They would feature um, theatrical spectacles, including the ancient equipment. Bro, you take like three days off a year, brother. I love what I do is not a thing you can compare, okay? It's so dumb. Also, what I'm talking about is like festivals and holidays and shit. That's what I love about American capitalism the most, as I've talked quite a bit about, which is like like Thanksgiving is fun. You know what I mean? You get, you get together with the family, you eat, you drink. Same with Christmas. There's like gift giving. That stuff is cool. Americans need to have more holidays, honestly equivalent of musicals. And we have evidence that people, even from rural communities, would come in for these festivals, especially the big ones. That's because they were state holidays. In the empire, there were over 100 days of public holidays. And what the just fuck? Dude, dude, what the 100? But I guess they didn't have weekends, right? I guess technically they didn't have weekends, which would be like around the same. It comes out to basically... No weekends, but basically the concept of weekends. You know what I mean? But I guess they also had a, uh, they also had uh, uh, a, a, like, was there a date? They didn't work on Sundays, did they? I can't remember. Did they work on Sundays? So I guess they had like at least 52 days off plus 100 holidays on top of that. So 152 holidays, 152 days off, right? So that's like, that's basically like having a, Ultimately, it's basically like having a fucking three-day weekend. Like, think about that. It's basically like working uh, four days a week rather than five. Like, that's what it comes out to. Also helps to have slaves. Yeah, but I don't know how, uh, like, I don't know how common, uh, like, how commonplace slaves were. I actually don't know. They definitely had, they definitely had a shit ton of slaves. I'm saying that like, well, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess even normal workers, like normal citizens had slaves too, right? Roman slavery is very different than American chattel slavery also. That is true, but there were a lot of slaves. It wasn't like industrialized, but most rich people had a ton of slaves. There's an intensity curve to the work week as well. The early part of the week was easier. The, they had hustle days. Oh yeah, we uh we watched the the historian civilis historia civilis video about that. About thirty percent of the population of the empire were enslaved. It was very common to the point that the Senate passed a resolution that slaves would not wear an identifier, because if they knew how many were around, they would revolt. One hundred and four days are weekend days, so we have more days off total. Please don't tell the capitalists. No, if you no, that's not true. If you factor in Sundays being off, that's 52. And then 100 days of holidays, that's 152. No, they had more days off across the board than we do. That's what I was doing. That's like, it factors, it factors into a, a four-day work week, basically. If you have 100 holidays plus all Sundays off, that quite literally is more days off unconditionally than the, uh, like... American uh, work week. Oh, shit, not this yet. It's Tamon. So, like, in ancient Rome, what was living there like? 
people worked and then went home and did they pay rent? The average Marcus, I should say, instead of the average Joe. He could be a shoemaker, could be someone who sews clothing, could be a launderer. Any of the activities that you need done in your general city life would be the same thing that they would need done in ancient Rome. Sometimes home was right above you. If they were quite wealthy, they might own the space that their shop is in, but often they would be renting out both of those spaces from a landlord. And you bet the Romans complained about their landlords. Shoddy upgrades, vermin that weren't being taken care of, a neighbor who parties too hard and wakes the baby. At TweakFan25, did they have weed in ancient Rome? Yes, but not in the way that you were asking. Romans really loved hemp as a plant, and they loved how easy it was to make ropes with it. We find hemp products all over the place, and hemp, the word for it in Latin, is cannabis. So you can see the connection. But there's no sense that the Romans, first of all, smoked it. Smoking was not a particularly good thing in Roman culture, but there's also not great evidence that they recognized its sort of mind-altering possibilities. At Kevin Feeney, it will always be faintly extraordinary to me that Roman historians cannot agree on the answer to the superficially simple question of how many Roman emperors were there. So when Augustus is the first emperor, he declares a successor, Tiberius. Tiberius becomes the next emperor, and miraculously we have two. So why is it so hard to keep counting? Eventually Rome becomes big, and eventually other people decide they could be emperor. And what does it take to become emperor? For a lot of Romans, the answer is an army that they're paying can declare them emperor and they can besiege Rome until they are declared emperor. Flash forward to later in the Roman Empire when we have divided centers. Is the center of Rome the city of Rome anymore? No. There is a center in Constantinople. At sometimes it's Milan, sometimes it's Ravenna. We're getting then multiple emperors or people who could be perceived as emperors at the same time, but we also get usurpers, guys with armies that come in, think, I could do this. And who gets to declare them emperor at that point? There aren't rules for this one way or another. It can become really hard for us to tell who is emperor. And sometimes all we have is a single coin as evidence. Just one coin that one guy who claims to be emperor minted. Was he emperor? We have no idea. At Terra Encounters, how many gods did ancient Romans worship? It's not really fair to ask how many gods they worship. <clears throat> it's more fair to ask what gods didn't they worship. Romans saw divine in lots of things. Springs had a divine being. Caves had a divine being. They had a festival to ward off mildew, and it was called the Robigalia, and it was in <clears throat> April. And that showed that they also thought that mildew had a divine spirit in it that they could essentially bribe to not destroy their crops. So the Romans had a really heavy heavy investment in seeing the divine in as many places as possible and finding a way to connect with that religiously. At Shakespeare, I need someone to tell me if Romulus and Remus were real, like immediately. Romulus and Remus are the legendary founders of Rome. They were twins who had been expelled from their patrimony by an evil king, and they were supposed to be drowned in a river. And the legend goes that a she-wolf found them and nursed them and prevented them from dying. And then when they grew up, they were able to overthrow the evil king and they were able to found their own civilization. But even the Romans are pretty skeptical about this story. You can see a lot of the historians later saying, really, a she-wolf, are we sure? it wasn't a sex worker that we just called a she-wolf. This was a pretty legendary story, sort of like George Washington and the cherry tree, and they didn't put much factual faith behind it. All right, that's all the time we have for questions for today. I hope you learned something weird and interesting about Romans, and we'll see This is sick. Also, the wolf meta is strong, which means the Romans were pantoranic as well, which means that which means that the Romans are also Turks. We're not going to dive into No Pixel yet. I'm going to watch this one too. And then after that, we're going to do No Pixel. Okay, so shut the fuck up.